guys, welcome along to another Photoshop tutorial. This video, I'm going to be taking a look at how you can make this clean professional logo in the new Photoshop CS6. As always, if you don't want to follow along with this tutorial, there's a link in the video description where you can download the template for this. And uh, there's also a, a few templates for other logos and other tutorials that I've made, so be sure to check those out. Okay, so here we are in the new Photoshop CS6. First thing we're going to do is create the new document that we're going to be working with. So if I go to File, New, and just change the width and height to quite high because it's always better to work with a large version, then you can always make it smaller. Okay, so for the width, I'm going to use 1024. And for the height, I'm just going to use the same. All right, so that is okay. Right, now we have our new project, so the first thing we're going to do is create the background gradient. Uh, just because it looks a little better than if we go for the default white. Uh, you can always hide the background layer if you're going to save it for a watermark. And I'll go through that at the end after we're done with creating the logo. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is select the gradient tool. Now what we have to do is pick the colors that we're going to use for our transition. So if we click this little box up in the top left here, You'll see that we can uh, pick the colors that we want the gradient to transition between. So, if you see these little arrow things, what they're called is they're called stops. If you double click on the first bottom one, you'll see that we get this box come up where we can choose the color that we want it to be. So I'm just going to pick a grayish color and hit OK on that. And then for the second little stop here, I'm going to change it to another gray, but just make it a bit lighter. Sweet, uh, now hit OK, and then OK again. Now we need to draw our gradient, so click at the bottom of the canvas, holding down Shift so it keeps a straight gradient, and then drag it up to the top, and then just let go of the click. OK, now let's get on to creating some shapes. So, uh, if I right click the Shapes tool here, and then choose the Ellipse tool, uh, before we start drawing our shape, it's probably best if we set up some guides so we can see and uh, position everything in the right places. If you press Ctrl R on your keyboard, uh, you should see these rulers on the side pop up. If you click on one of the rulers and then uh, drag outwards, you should see this little tealish uh, guide if you haven't changed your color, but yeah, default it's teal. So you just want to kind of drag this into the middle of the canvas. And then, it, and then it should just kind of uh, snap into place. Now you just want to do the same with the other side. Awesome. So now we've got our guide set up. Let's get on to creating the shapes. Okay, with that ellipse tool that we selected earlier, click in the center of the canvas where we just marked out with our guides and drag out a little bit. And then hold down Alt and Shift. You'll see that the shape extends from the center and it is a perfect circle. Just keep on dragging until it's almost at the edges, and then you can release a click. Now, because we're going to be making a few shapes, you probably want to change the uh, coloring so we know which shape is which. If you click this little fill box up here, you'll see that we can change the color. So I'm just going to choose a dark gray. Awesome. Uh, now, if we duplicate this shape layer, uh, you'll see why we're going to do that a bit later on, but just duplicate it by right-clicking on it and then clicking uh, Duplicate Layer. Okay, so now I'm going to cut out a bit of the shape to create that ring around the edge that we saw earlier. So to do this, I'm going to choose the Subtract Front Shape from this uh, first little drop down here. And then you just want to click in the middle of the canvas again, hold down Alt and Shift, and then drag it out so it's just a little smaller than that other circle that we made earlier. Sweet. Uh, now let's change the color just to a lighter gray with that same color box there. Okay, now we've just got one more shape to make. So if we go back into that drop down list again and make sure you've chosen to create a new layer. Now I just click in the middle of the canvas, hold down shift and alt again. And then create another circle a little smaller than the previous one. Like that. Awesome. Cool, now let's get on to creating some styles. Uh, if you double click that ring layer that we made, uh, it should be the middle one, it'll bring up the layer styles window. And from here you want to check the inner shadow, 
gradient overlay and drop shadow. Now if we click on the inner shadow text, it'll just change the menu to that inner shadow menu. And to create a little highlight, I'm just going to change the blend mode of this to normal, the color to white, the opacity to 100%, distance to 5 pixels, size to 5 pixels, and that is all for the inner shadow. Now you just want to choose the gradient overlay, so once you've done that, just click on the little gradient box there, and we're going to make a grayish gradient like we did kind of at the start. So for this first stop, uh, choose a light gray, and then for the second one, choose a little lighter gray. Cool, now we've done for the gradient, so click OK on that, and then choose the drop shadow style. And all you want to do in here is change the size to about 20 and the rest would just be fine. So now we've done with the layer styles, just hit OK. OK, so now instead of doing the whole thing again on the center shape, it's probably easier if we kind of copy and paste the layer styles. So you can do this by right clicking the layer that we just put those styles on and then choosing copy layer style. And then if we go right click the one that we want the styles to go on to and click paste layer styles and then it'll just paste those styles onto there. Now here's where we can change the color of that background shape. If you select the shape layer and then choose that fill box at the top left, you can uh, pick the color that you want to change the shape to. So I'm just going to change it to a lightish blue and you'll see that changes uh, as we change the color. You can of course change this to any color and customize it to your own likings. Awesome, so I think that is it for the shapes. So now we're going to move on to the text. So let's right click the text tool and then choose the horizontal type mask tool. Click outside of the shapes and then type in the text that you want. I'm going to use the letters D and 3. And now I'm just going to change the font to a font called Dodger Condensed. Uh, there'll be a link in the video description if, if you want to use this exact font. And that's looking a bit small, so I'm just going to change up the size by clicking on that little T there. And then kind of dragging it to the side. And then to move it, if we hold down Control on our keyboard and then just move this little bounding box, you see that we can position and resize the text as well. So I'm just going to make it so it goes a little out of the shape. Uh, that's fine because in the end, it'll kind of connect with that little blue part in the background there. Cool, now I click the top shape layer. And then I'm going to make it so that we can just kind of hide that selection that we have from the shape. So we can see the blue shape behind it. Easiest way to do this is uh, since we've got a selection, if you hold down Alt and then click the little Add Layer Mask button down here, you'll see that we can uh, hide the text from the shape, which is uh, pretty cool. So now, if you want to reposition the text a little bit more, you can click this little chain here just to turn off the lock, and then you can uh, select the layer mask, and then choose the Move tool, and then you can uh, reposition it by clicking and dragging or just using your arrow keys on your keyboard. Sweet, so that is pretty much it for the text. Now I'm just going to make this look a little better by adding a few highlights and stuff like you saw in the preview I showed you. So if you hold down and uh, if you hold down control and then click on this colored shape background, we can make a selection from it just so our highlights don't go outside of the shape. And now you just want to create a new layer by clicking the new layer button so we can put the highlight on its own layer. And you just want to make sure that you have that above the colored layer. Now we're going to use the brush tool to make this highlight. So if I choose the brush tool and then in the canvas, if I hold down Alt and then use my right click button on my mouse and then I drag this horizontally, you'll see that we can change the size. And if you do it vertically, you'll see that we can change the hardness of the brush. So if I make uh, this about half the size of the shape, and you just want to make sure that you have your white set as your foreground color. And then just click. And if you want to change the layer mode of that to overlay. And if you want to make that highlight a little more or less visible, you can either uh, 
duplicate it to make it more visible or you can just lower the opacity to make it uh, a little less visible so now we've done with that now if you want to add some additional gloss similar to the last thing we did but a little different you just want to create a new layer and make sure it's at the top of the list and then make sure that you've got the selection of the blue shape again just by holding down control and uh, clicking on that blue icon now we only want this to cover half so if I choose the marquee tool which is this one up here hold down alt to uh, kind of get rid of the part of the selection and then I drag this to about half of that little circle there and then it's just going to remove half of the circle so if we set white as our foreground color and then I hold down alt plus backspace it's just going to fill the selection to that layer now if you just want to change the uh, layer mode to screen and then you can lower the opacity to your own liking you can always change the color by double clicking this blue shape icon and then just picking a new one it's just going to update live so you can kind of go through pick the best color that you want that's going to suit your logo okay so now we've basically finished the logo uh, if you're wanting to save it as a watermark so you can kind of put it on your videos or use it as something else then you just want to hide that background gradient that we made at the start just by clicking this little hide button or that little eye there that we see beside the layer and now if we go to file and then click save if you change the file type to PNG which will uh, keep the transparency and uh, then just hit save and then we're done so thanks for watching if you like this video be sure to click the like button below and add it to your favorites uh, share it with your friends and leave a comment below telling me what you thought as always if you want to see more tutorials that I upload be sure to click the subscribe button as well just one more thing as well uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Twitter basically you'll be able to keep up with uh, all the updates uh, tutorials that I'm making when they're coming out you can also submit tutorials that I might create in a future video so be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter links are in the video description